the New South. Notice this is chapter 18 in your book, but chapter 18 is covering the New South and the New West. We're going to be specifically looking at the sections that are on the South. So when you're reading chapter 18, um, focus really on those sections when looking at these videos. So this is looking at the time period right after Reconstruction, 1877 through 1900-ish. Sometimes we go a little bit further and sometimes we're not quite making it to 1900, so kind of keep that in mind. Basically, this is considered the time period of the New South, whereas the Old South would have been the South before the Civil War. So hopefully you've taken 1301. If not, think what would be different about the South before the Civil War. The big one, of course, would be slavery, but then there's a lot of consequences to that. So the problem is during this time period of the New South, you're going to see a lot of progress happening in this region, but there's some conflicting views of this progress because the thing is progress is going to occur, but really it can only occur within a framework of white supremacy. So in this way, the New South is really the Old South, but under slightly new conditions. On the surface, it seems like the rest of America, with things like building railroads, factories, people moving to towns and cities, things like that. Um, but really, this is all happening on a smaller scale. And really, the New South is still predominantly rural despite these changes. Still, these changes are affecting the South. They're gonna bring a lot of political, social turmoil. We're seeing things like black people are gonna start asserting their rights. Um, women are being encouraged now to work maybe outside of the home, maybe even pursue a career. And these kinds of things really frightened white men in the South because many times they viewed this situation as a zero sum society. Um, zero sum means that basically the idea is like if you have a piece of, if you have a whole pie, if someone gets a piece of the pie, that means automatically other people can't have that piece of the pie. Whereas actually when you look at society and economics and stuff like that, we don't have an actual zero sum giving giving people who are minorities more rights does not automatically take away the rights of the people who already had rights. It's just, you know, being more inclusive. But white men in the South at this time viewed it as, oh, by giving, you know, African Americans rights or women more rights economically or politically, that was taking away something from themselves. So um, this really frightens them. And we're going to see like white Southern leaders are going to use white supremacy to stifle dissent. We are going to see when we're looking at all these different changes in the New South at this time, things like growing cities and new industries. So that urbanization and industry is really growing. Um, a lot of this is going to be things like railroad construction, linking cities. Um, you're going to see an increase in like commercial prominence. There's also just an increase in growing urban influence in the rural South, because when you have more people coming together on a regular basis, this is going to form new ideas. Um, also, it forms, you know, new consumer products and everything, new values. This isn't going to go across everything. We're not necessarily seeing electricity in all of the South yet. We're not getting like telephones. We're not really seeing public health services. We're not really seeing public schools established. Um, completely. It's starting to move towards that direction, but not just completely. We are going to see that while the urban areas are kind of expanding out um, with ideas and size and everything like that, a lot of the countryside is still going to be without daily contact that really would have broadened their perspective. When we look at politics of the New South, really the Democratic Party, they are going to dominate during this time period. They're going to purge most black people from participating in the politics and a lot of white people from the electoral process as well, especially if they didn't agree with the Democratic Party. Um, we're going to see that really the Democrats are going to suppress any challenges to their leadership. This is why this time period, the New South is seen as the solid South because they're solidly behind one 
political party, even though the reality was there was a lot of people who didn't necessarily want to go with that political party, but many of them were suppressed. When it comes to women, we're going to see most are going to remain at home or on the farm, but some enjoying some new options. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of this. A lot of them are going to promote memories of the war, especially the so-called Confederacy. They're going to start lobbying for causes, though, um, and might even work outside the home in like textile mills or in factories or as servants. And then, of course, you have your black Southerners. This is going to be the really the first generation after emancipation, and they're going to want more than just freedom. They want things like self-respect, dignity. Um, they want the right to work, to vote, to go to school, to travel. But all of these rights for African Americans are really going to be severely restricted by legislation and by violence. But we'll get to that in a bit. So just quick note, you can use this chart for notes if you wanted to. Um, when we're looking at the Old South versus the New South, this is just a great way to kind of organize your thoughts. You do not have to do this, but it's just kind of an option. So looking at the industries first, we're seeing a lot of industry is growing. Let's look at what specific industries though. So first of all, we're gonna get steel mills. The thing is, um, within a decade, we're going to get iron and steel mills, specifically in like Birmingham, Alabama, surpassing, surpassing Chattanooga, Tennessee. And they even start challenging the preeminent steel making city of Pittsburgh. So that's a really big deal. We're seeing lots of steel being developed. And think about how steel affects other industries then. We're also going to see the textile industry at this time have significant growth. This would be in like the 1880s. The thing is, we're getting a lot of population growth across the South now that, you know, a war isn't going on and everything. But farm income was really low at this time. And so with farm income low, a lot of people had to give up their farms. They didn't actually make it. And so they were willing to go to work for a very small pay because they were desperate on some level. And so this cheap labor source is going to oftentimes go to work in the textile mills. On top of that, you got to think, what is the big commodity in the South that has been like the South? Hopefully you thought of cotton. Cotton was plentiful and cheap, and so Southern textile industries means that the South can really be less dependent on Northern manufactured goods and instead really push for textile industry and have their own manufacturing. In fact, by 1900, the South is going to surpass New England as the nation's foremost textile manufacturing center. Tobacco. Also, if you've taken 1301, hopefully you went, I know this crop. This has been around. This predates the Civil War and everything. Um, however, really, tobacco up until this point has been predominantly chewing tobacco. But during this time period, there's going to be the discovery of the bright leaf tobacco strain that's basically suitable for smoking. With this, we're going to see a change in America's cigarette ha um, habits or tobacco habits. Think about how many people you know who do chewing tobacco, which actually has made a bigger comeback recently. But think about how many people you know that do chewing tobacco versus how many people you know that smoke cigarettes. Yeah. We also get Coca-Cola. I should mention Coca-Cola is not mentioned in your book, which is a shame, but I want to talk about it. Um, because think about how many people you know today who drink Coca-Cola or have ever had a Coke. Um, and I say that as Coke meaning Coca-Cola and not like so many uh, Southerners refer to Coke as all of the colas. <laughs> so the thing is, um, Coca-Cola, I have to admit, it is not nearly as important as like textiles or tobacco when it came to being an industry, but it is developed during this time period. It was not an overnight success. It was initially developed by Dr. John Pemberton. He developed it trying to make a good tasting cure for headaches but then he eventually ended up selling the rights to Asa Candler actually in 1889. Asa Candler would go on to really tinker with the formula and then he markets the product heavily 
And it becomes a lot more successful a lot faster. In fact, by the mid-1890s, it's on the national market. Um, fun fact, also, Coca-Cola basically invented how we see Santa Claus today. Um, their commercials and everything made, um, made him look like the jolly, red-nosed, very chubby man that we tend to envision him to be to this day. Railroads. This is the last big industry that I wanted to talk about here. Railroads. You can see on this pictures, um, railroads in 1870 is on the left and railroads in 1890 is on the right. So we're definitely seeing railroad growth and we're just even looking at that southern part when looking at this industry. Um, we're going to see railroad construction really booms, especially in like the 1880s. It does outpace the rest of the nation in the south. Mileage doubled just between 1880 and 1890. The thing is with railroads, this means that people are going to have a lot more quick as well as direct access to like southern markets and products, especially up in like the northeast and everything. Um, this means that they have access to all kinds of things. And this can mean physical products like fertilizers or new ideas or communities. Um, which can include anything from like fashion and such. This also means though the South is a lot more keyed into the market and the market is a lot more keyed into what the South is going to plant. It also means that people know what kind of terms of credit they can expect. And it finally means that this opens up a lot of areas to settlement and economic development that had been basically previously closed to Americans. Um, we're seeing that the Appalachian Mountains are going to be penetrated much more frequently and it's a lot easier to travel from east to west and connecting the nation. So I ask you this question, looking at all these industries, which industry do you think had the biggest impact and explain why.